How to calculate the density of a solid object. Here I have two different solid objects and I want to calculate their density. So how's knowing an object's density useful? Well, knowing an object's density can help me positively identify the object or predict its behavior in relationship to other objects. I can compare the density of an unknown material to a known material's density to determine if they're the same material. For example, if I have something that looks like gold, I can calculate its density and compare that to the known density of gold. Density can help positively identify a substance. Now let's begin the experiment. Here I have a piece of cut and polished stone cut from a countertop. In order to calculate the density of this object, I need mass and volume. Mass is easy to obtain as I can use my digital scale. The scale gives me a mass of 1,353 grams. Next, I need to calculate the volume. Because this object is evenly shaped, I will measure its length, width, and height with a simple pair of calipers. Then I can multiply those numbers to get the volume of the object in cubic centimeters. When I measure my sample, this object measures 12.3 centimeters long, 12.8 centimeters wide, and 3.1 centimeters high. With this, I can calculate the stone's volume. Multiplying length, width, and height, I get 488.1 cubic centimeters. That's rounded to one decimal place. Now that I have mass and volume, I can plug these numbers into the density equation. I divide the mass by the volume and I get a density of 2.77 grams per cubic centimeter. That is the density of this object. Now I can look at a chart of known densities to see if I can identify the type of stone. The density of my piece is within the density range of common granite. Let's do another example, this time with an irregularly shaped object. This is a simple calibration weight. I won't be able to use my calipers to measure its volume due to these curves in the surface, but I can obtain the volume indirectly by submerging it in a beaker of water. The difference between starting volume and ending volume will be the volume of my object. Here I have a beaker of 175 milliliters of water. I'm going to place the object into a second identical beaker. Next, I'm going to pour the water into the second beaker until I measure 175 milliliters. When doing this test yourself, be sure to choose an amount of water that will cover the object. The water remaining in my first beaker represents the displaced volume of the object. I will measure this in my graduated cylinder. The object displaced 38 milliliters of water from the original 175 milliliters. That means my object has a volume of 38 milliliters. Since this is a calibration weight, the mass is stamped on top, which is 300 grams. Now that I have mass and volume, I can plug these numbers into my equation to get density. I divide the mass of 300 grams by the volume of 38 milliliters, and that gives me a density of 7.9 grams per milliliter. The volume of solid objects are typically measured in cubic centimeters and liquids with milliliters. Cubic centimeters and milliliters are equivalent units of volume, so we can still make the calculation. And that's how to calculate the density of a solid object. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.